Welcome to the Medical Center Show. I'm Joe Scott, President and CEO. Today we have a very exciting topic. We're gonna to talk about orthopedic trauma. Uh, we'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by US News and World Report. Hudson County's only hospital to receive an A safety score rating. Jersey City Medical Center is Hudson County's only hospital to receive the prestigious Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. Make the number one hospital in Hudson County your first choice for quality health care. Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Frank Liberace, who is the, the chief of our orthopedic trauma at Jersey City Medical Center. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Frank, and kind of um, how, um, how you came to the medical center. Well, thanks a lot for having me mm -hmm. today, Joe. So, a little about myself. Well, I'm born and raised in the area. Oh, you uh, are? Yeah, originally I didn't know from that. Bronx, New York. Okay, great. And so, uh, grew up in New York City and trained mostly in New York. Right. And then um, went and did a fellowship in uh, Florida and Tampa. Okay. And uh, even though the sun was very attractive, yeah, I was drawn yeah. home. Right. And so, I came to New Jersey and um, was faculty at uh, University of Medicine and Dentistry for a number of years. Okay. And then um, came over to Jersey City Medical Center because it was a very exciting, growing place. Sure. Um, major trauma center right on the border of New York City. Right. So close and near and dear to home. Right. Uh, a lot of people that grew up in that area have migrated over because sure. Jersey actually is a wonderful state and uh, moved on to be a professor of orthopedics at NYU as well as working at Jersey so, City Medical Center. So not only do you work at the medical center, but you're also a professor of orthopedics at NYU. Correct. Wow, that's amazing. That's, that's really, we're very, very fortunate to have you on our staff. I'm lucky to be there. So you kind of have a real niche. You're different than most of our other orthopedic trauma surgeons in that you've got the special fellowship, right? Mm -hmm. The special training. So tell me a little bit about why that's different and how come you're different than kind of most of the other orthopedic surgeons on our staff. Well, honestly speaking, probably all of us, including myself, until I got involved in the field, think of orthopedist is just a bone doctor. Right. But actually, it really involves eight very discrete specialties. Of wow. course, as in any specialty or in medicine, there's a general treatment right. for all your needs. So there's general bone doctors or general orthopedists. But there's eight specialties, and my own specialty, per se, is uh, called orthopedic trauma and reconstructive surgery. Okay. So essentially, uh, what that entails is you do some extra training after you've gone through your university training, medical school, residency, and then you defer going into practice to get training by specialists in the field right. um, that really deal with the worst of the worst injuries wow. and uh, also deal with the worst of the worst problems with joint replacements. And right. as we all know, uh, things are getting much more high energy, cars are faster, buildings are taller, right. so injuries are worse. And right. we also know that more and more people have joint replacements. Wow. So, and unfortunately, uh, a joint replacement is just a machine, and like any machine, requires maintenance. So on the first go around when your car is new, well, it's wonderful, it smells great, it's really fast. Right. But down the road, when it starts to break down and requires maintenance, this is much more challenging. Right. So it's kind of, um, what some uh, other docs joke about, the practice that nobody wants, yeah. <laughs> but it's the practice that I love. So you're, you're really there to kind of sometimes pick up the pieces when things maybe may not go so well, and it, you know, especially for trauma. I mean, yeah. you talk about people who have these crushing injuries. Yeah, and that's a, uh, a definite um, problem that we have because unfortunately we cannot choose in trauma what comes into us, what right. the situation was, how the person was hurt, right. um, whether the bone was exposed to the outside world as an right. open or compound fracture, or whether it was a low energy thing that happened on the soccer field. Well, wow, like that guy, did you see the basketball game uh, last week where the player jumped up and fell and then all of a sudden his bone was sticking out of his leg. Yeah, I heard like, about that. It was yeah. like incredible. Yeah. So you sometimes see those kinds of injuries in, um, at the medical center because of car accidents or other types of accidents? Yeah, all, all too frequently. Really? Um, 
you know, uh, we are a, a level trauma center in the right. state of New Jersey, and right. as you obviously know, there's really a limited number of those for very sure. densely populated area. Right. And uh, we have a lot of highways. All of us uh, say where we live by our exit number. Right. And so people travel very fast, and we have a lot of uh, multi-trauma injuries where multiple bones are broken, as well as multiple other organ systems that are affected. So we work together with our colleagues that are trauma specialists within the other surgical specialties as well. Okay. So and so <clears throat> when an accident like that happens, we come to the trauma center, you get involved in the case. Mm -hmm. How complicated are they? Are they, is it sometimes difficult to treat or, you know, why is it so special that you're there that kind of helps really get patients who might not have been able to be treated at the medical center until you came? Mm -hmm. you know, well, aren't there some of those? Ab absolutely. And uh, that's a great question. You know, like anything else, there's a spectrum. Right. So um, I guess talking about the one end of the spectrum where we're seeing more and more, what we seem to forget is we only think of the bone as a structure. Right. But the bone has a systemic effect, or the, a total body effect. Right. So all the surrounding soft tissues that may be mangled in a bad situation, your nerves, your arteries, they put your limb at risk for, God forbid, an amputation. Right. Um, as well as the marrow or the fat that uh, within the bone, when it gets displaced in a very high energy injury, can enter your bloodstream. Wow. And if it's not stabilized correctly, that could as well migrate to your heart, lungs, or brains and unfortunately result in fatality. Wow. So it's very important to act expeditiously. And also when we are delivering our treatments, you know, we never can forget that surgery is actually a controlled trauma. So right. we need to limit the amount of additional trauma we do while we're trying to help somebody. Oh, I see. Okay. And so, so it requires many special techniques. Wow, this sounds really, really complicated. Mm -hmm. the, the, um, I, we're very fortunate to have you um, on our staff. When the patients present to the trauma center, so obviously we have trauma surgeons in-house 24, but they're 24 hours, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. They usually assess the patient. And they can kind of make a determination on when you're needed and ask you to come in and, and help out? Is that usually how that works? Cor correct. So usually the first interaction a patient has on the field is obviously with EMS, and we have right. our EMS services that bring them in. Then they are triaged or evaluated by the emergency room staff, right. who then deems these very serious patients very quickly and expeditiously that they need to go into a trauma alert. Right. And so the general surgeons have a trauma specialty, and they do a total body evaluation of a patient okay. and call in specialists like myself for orthopedics oh, or I neurosurgery see. or urology based on what the different stratification of body injuries are. Wow. So when somebody has a really bad accident. They could be in the OR for a long period of time. What's the longest you've ever operated on somebody who, from a trauma perspective? 22 hours. 22 hours? Yes. Man, how do you do that? How do you stay up for 22 hours? Well, That's it, tough, right? Well, it requires, uh, it requires concentration. Yeah, for it requires sure. a great staff. Right. Um, and um, it really requires a motivation and goal-oriented behavior. Right. And, um, you know, it's very satisfying when you can start seeing that patient recover over the course of months and sometimes, depending on the injuries, even years. Wow. But it's very gratifying. So the patient would have come into the, op or come into the trauma center, be evaluated. Uh, patient obviously is in dire need, goes to the operating room, and for 22 hours you operated on them. And good outcome? Well... Remember, once again, what we said is with trauma, we always have to have realistic expectations. Right. So for what was delivered, absolutely a yeah, good outcome. It was a good outcome. Great. Well, uh, those are the kinds of services that really none of the other hospitals in Hudson County can provide. We're the trauma center. We have specialists like you. Great training over at NYU. So at NYU, you do teaching for the NYU um, orthopedic program there also. Are those orthopedic uh, uh, the uh, residents that are over there, are they going to come over to the medical center also? Or is, is that kind of the plan as we move forward? Absolutely. So the, um, the chief residents or those that are at the end of their training right. are going to be coming over. They're the most senior residents okay. uh, for special teaching over there because I've been fortunate enough that at the last program I was at, I started actually an orthopedic trauma fellowship myself. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So, what we so are really trying... training people to do what you do. Correct. Wow. And so we're having a selective rotation that's very specific. Okay for those that are at the end of their training to get right. this experience. Wow, that's really, really great. Well, we'll be right back with Dr. Liberace to talk more about orthopedic trauma. 
Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12-screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report. Why? Because of its patient care, not its bottom line. Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. The Jersey City Medical Center accepts all patients and most insurance. At the Jersey City Medical Center, your health is our concern, not our bottom line. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center. For patients, not for profit. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Liberace talking about orthopedic trauma surgery. So tell us a little bit about kind of what happens in that surgery. So it's quite interesting. You know, you always wonder, what ends up inside of me? Why did I come in and why was my leg in multiple different angles and my foot was pointing west but my body was pointing oh east gosh. and why is it straight? Yeah. So it really involves a lot of different things. We think of ourselves as bone surgeons but really we fix the bone as a structure to treat the soft tissues. And we do that with a variety of different uh, objects here. So sometimes if your soft tissues are very poorly affected and you have a horrible, horrible fracture because of the energy absorbed from let's right. say a 90 mile an hour car accident or falling four stories, we end up using devices like this called external fixators. Okay. And this is where the only element, remember we said surgery is actually controlled trauma. So the only element of trauma are these tiny little pins that go into the leg when it's all swollen. Maybe the arteries and nerves are cut and require other specialists to take care of it. Right. While everything calms down, so to speak, which could be one or two or even three weeks. Okay. And we connect these pins with these bars and clamps. And it almost looks like an erector set if you're Remember. So, so what, this is going through the bone, correct? And then this is kind of on the outside. So, so if we take a look at this model here, right. this is really your thigh bone or your femur, okay. strongest bone in the body. But let's say you were very, very sick and had multiple other problems, we would temporarily poke these little pins through the skin, okay. get them into the bone, actually with drills, and then on each side of the fracture, if it represented by my finger here and then connect these bars and clamps to keep the bone straight to prevent that marrow from dancing around and getting in our bloodstream and potentially killing us. Wow. Until we're nice and safe to come back, remove the device, address the soft tissues, and potentially even put in a rod inside wow. of the bone to help keep it straight. That goes inside the bone, inside not the like alongside bone. it, wow. No, and it's all internal. Right. And it's actually done through quite small incisions with some advanced techniques. You're using live x-ray during the uh, operating room setting. Right. And then uh, hopefully you can go on and heal. Now, but we have to remember that so this is, is all. This, is this painful when they're, when, like after they have the rod put in, does the pain eventually go away? Or is that something that they'll always feel? Or, you know, what, what do patients tell you after? So that's a great question. Um, the initial discomfort with any major surgical procedure is approximately 48 to 72 hours. Mm -hmm. After that time, really the discomfort level goes down quite a bit. Okay. And you'd imagine some small skinny rod like this is gonna allow somebody to put weight on their leg almost immediately after surgery once they're comfortable. Wow. So as the healing process continues, I always like to discuss with people, day one when the bone is broken, this is doing 100% of the work, the bone's doing none. But by the time the bone is healed, this is almost like a wristwatch, and it's just jewelry on the inside. So, the bone will actually heal itself, mm -hmm. and so where there was a fracture, it will actually come together? So yes. How, what's, how does that work? I mean, physiologically, your bones regenerate? That's, that's actually an excellent way of putting it. Uh, the skeletal system is the most unique organ system in the whole body. Mm -hmm. If we have a heart attack or a stroke, things fill in or recuperate via scar. Right. If we cut ourselves slicing our bagel in the morning, we get a scar. Yeah. 
The bone Actually, I have one right here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bone regenerates itself with bone mm -hmm. if everything went well. Right. And so it's an exact replica of the bone that was before. And every year, our entire skeletal system gets replaced by a new skeletal system twice a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So when they have this kind of injury, you kind of try to pull it all together, and then hopefully the bone will regenerate itself. Correct. And then it'll get, does it get stronger a as a result of that? or? So that's an excellent point, too. Depending on... Um, what modality of fixation happen? It's actually a simple engineering process. And when using rods, for instance, the bone gets thicker, and oh. you build almost a little ball of bone around the side of fracture. Oh, wow. And so, as with any tube, the thicker the tube, it's much stronger in bending strength. Right. So it's actually a physiologic response where, in some cases, depending how the bone was fixed, it actually gets stronger. Wow! How about that? That's really amazing. That's it's amazing what the body kind of kind of regenerates. The best itself. engineer. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Well, we're very fortunate to have you when there's a trauma, but you do a whole host of other things. I mean, there are people who, you know, people like me who ran for a long period of time. Sometimes my hips are like, oh, maybe, uh, maybe I need to go see Dr. Liberace and talk about my hips. So you do other kinds of, of orthopedic surgery, I mean, not just the stuff that comes through the emergency department. Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, most of that is focused on actually joint replacement okay. and joint preservation. Because a lot of times, you know, we get in our mind now in modern day society, we have arthritis. Does that mean an operation right away? Right. Well, initially, no, we have non-operative ways of treating it, but also we think when we get to an operation, does that mean we have to totally replace our joint? And the answer is not always yes to that. Okay. Sometimes we can have an inherent deformity or angular problem that is just like if your tar uh, tires are out of line on your car and okay. they wear funny. Right. So we can actually cut the bone and realign it to help provide a new surface that wasn't being used before and correct the alignment and save your joint. Wow, so you don't always have to go to a joint replacement immediately. No, you so don't. So how do you evaluate those patients? So, and like figure out mm. this one needs a replacement or this one can just be adjusted. Right, so that's great. So we always like to think of people in age, but I think that's kind of, um, that's kind of out of the box now in 2013. Yeah, listen, you're a young guy. Let's not talk about age, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, you have 70-year-olds that are yeah. healthier than 30-year-olds yeah, sure. very often. Yeah. We're living longer. We're healthier. We yeah. want to treat ourselves better. So you really have to look at the physiologic age or how active the patient is. Right. You also have to look at with any sort of structure that you're rebuilding, what do you have available to you? So if you have... Part of the joint that's very good, we can do what's called an osteotomy or cut the bone and realign it and mm -hmm. take advantage of that and use it in an okay. active person. All right. If most of the joint is destroyed, uh, even if somebody is active, well, we have great technologies now where the machine of a joint replacement lasts a lot longer than it did just 15 years ago. Oh, really? So we can replace, we have all sorts of different bearing surfaces where the different uh, fake aspects of the joint, for instance, the ball and cup aspect of a hip joint, mm -hmm. we have all different options in what the ball is made of and what the cup is made of. Okay. So it gives you different wear properties, just like if you bought a snow tire or a racing tire. Right. So. Tell me a little bit about, so somebody comes in and they're complaining of joint pain, you know, how do you diagnose them? What are some of the tools that you use to, to help patients, you know, determine what, what the treatment should be? Well, the first thing we do in, is we examine the person because mm -hmm. you'd be surprised what you find. Sometimes their, their hip hurts, but really the hip is next to our groin. And the oh. patient may come in and say their hip hurts and they're pointing to the side or the back part of their buttock. That okay. may be a spinal problem. So oh. just talking with somebody can give us 70 to 80 or 85 percent of our diagnosis wow. by figuring out. Wow. Just watching them walk, we can sometimes see is one leg longer than the other. Right. Were they born with a deformity? Did they have a trauma in the past that may not have been treated appropriately okay. and resulted in abnormal alignment? Right. So that's step one. Uh, step two, we order an x-ray. Right. Just a simple, standard, cheap x-ray. Wow. And um, limited radiation, takes a matter of seconds, and it helps us see what is the alignment, it lets us compare the two sides for what is that person's normal anatomy, okay. and lets us see how much wear is there, or where is the disappearance of what we call the joint space. Okay. Well, let me mm. stop you there. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back with Dr. Liberace to talk more about uh, orthopedics. <laughs>
It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, on the web at libertyhealth.org. Welcome back. We're with Dr. Liberace. We're just talking about the different types of uh, things that you use to diagnose patients. So you talked a little bit about just simply a physical examination it tells you an awful lot about what's going on with a patient. A uh, simple x-ray. What else? Well, in cases where we see a lot of deformity mm -hmm. or in cases where somebody had a previous trauma or in cases where they had a previous joint replacement that wore out or right. went wrong. Okay. Uh, the next step often would be to get uh, a CAT scan. Okay. And a CAT scan kind of gives, gives us some finer detail of the area and All lets right. us see things three-dimensionally. Okay. So it's almost like looking at a mannequin of inside the body as opposed to a still portrait. Okay. And CAT scans are really minimally and it's not a big deal to have a CAT scan these no, days? No, actually, it's, uh, the radiation exposure is much less. Okay. The time is under five minutes, right. and, and the quality of the picture is so much greater than it was just 15 years ago. It's really amazing how many strides we've made. Wow. Talk us uh, through a little bit about joint replacements now. There's some new technologies, and the, the, the replacement material is different now, right? I mean, are, aren't some of the advances just amazing with what you can kind of do with patients who need a, a when they do need a joint replacement? Uh, absolutely. We touched on before a little bit about the different types of tires or bearing surfaces right. we can use. There's plastics or really polyethylenes that are so hard that in a natural environment, if put in well without a deformity, can last 20, even 30 years. Wow. There's, uh, there's metals that are stronger, harder, and more smoothly polished to decrease friction mm -hmm. and decrease the amount of wear. And there's also ceramics, which are extremely hard surfaces. And we can combine these different technologies to maximize the wear pattern. Wow. Plus, our understanding of the anatomy is so much better that we're really recreating what is normal anatomy as opposed to forcing on somebody abnormal anatomy. Oh, I see. So you can kind of mix and match and figure out what's the best thing for that individual. It's really Correct. a customized it, it's approach, It's very, right? very specialized. You know, in the past, those would joke that it's almost like being um, the old-time shoe salesman doing yeah. a joint. You size the foot and plop it on. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot more uh, to it now, and it offers a lot more options for people for what they need. Right. So what joints can you replace? So You can replace almost any joint in the body. We most typically really? think of knees and hips, right. but you can replace elbows and shoulders, wow. some of the small joints in the hand, and the ankle. Wow, and do you see patients who need like elbow replacements and like because they play tennis or what? Well, elbow replacements are uh, a bit more rare than right. knee and hip. Knee and hip are probably the most common ones from just lifelong wear from right. our odometer going up. Yeah. Elbow replacements are more common in people that may have other systemic or total body conditions that over time destroy the elbow, right. other than general arthritis, or in the cases where the very elderly have a very complex elbow fracture, okay. where their bone is the quality of almost powdered sugar, um. and this will give them a chance to get back some function right. when the bone itself can't accept the hardware we use to fix it in a different situation. Oh, I see. Okay. So, I'm a patient. My knees hurt. When do they come see you? You know, what kind of, do you recommend that anybody who's, you know, just because they have a hurt knee, they come see you? Or, you know, when, what's kind of the... When do I know to go see you versus, you know, just going to see my primary care doctor, for example? Well, everybody's welcome always. But mm, of course. realistically, um, if you had some progressive knee pain that's been slow over a few months or a few years, no specific, specific traumatic injury that occurred to you, right. probably starting out with your primary care doctor is right. a good idea. Okay. And they can do some of the screening tests and even start with some treatment in terms of prescribing physical therapy prescribing some anti-inflammatory medications, right. et cetera. 
if these uh, treatments just are not adequate over time, then um, you would go to see a specialist. Right. And uh, the first line of specialist would either be a physical medicine and rehabilitation doctor right. or an orthopedic surgeon, right. either one. Yeah. And there still are non-operative options there where we can do injections of different things like steroids. Right. And, um, you know, speaking... And that's because somebody just might have an inflammation in their knee or... Correct. With the, yeah. with the wear and the deformity, right. when things are a little abnormal, we get inflamed. Okay. And so the steroids can help that. And the steroids don't really circulate in a high concentration throughout the body, like we took them by mouth or we took them with a needle in the vein. Oh. These are lo much more localized to the oh, joint. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So that doesn't get absorbed into the rest of your body. It really stays right Not to the same level. So people don't have to worry about the side effects, really, of this, of this uh, steroids, they're right? They're much, most. much, much, much less than if we took a total okay. body one. All right. And then we have other things we can inject, too, now, um, different types of actual lubricants that mimic our natural lubricants within really? the knee. Yeah. And then that, and so all of those things, you're trying to really prevent surgery. Surgery is the last resort? Correct. Yeah. And usually people are, can't function, and that's why you end up going to surgery. Is that correct? Is that usually what the the, uh, the course is? Well, that's really interesting. So you talked about how about shoulders? You replace shoulders yes. also, and when do you normally see somebody with, who needs like a shoulder replacement? Well, shoulder replacement can, again, it's a wonderful tool in the trauma setting in the very elderly that has a very complex fracture that just can't accommodate the fixation or the screws and plates we use. Right. So that's one time where for a traumatic reason we use it. Other times it can also be same like we talked about with the elbow. You have a general systemic illness, let's say rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, right. which unfortunately causes inflammation in many joints and that inflammation is so aggressive it destroys them over time. Oh my gosh. Yeah or also people with overuse injuries. Let's mm -hmm. say you were a quarterback for a number of years <laughs> and you end up with a problem. Let's say you had a rotator cuff tear or a muscular tear that you've had multiple treatments for that but they just didn't go as expected and you developed an arthritis. Right. So the, these are the times when we would consider a shoulder replacement. Wow, great. So these are all great things that you're able to, to do here, right here at the medical center. Um, you're in a group now, mm -hmm. uh, the NYU, um, New York University orthopedic group that's coming over to Jersey City Medical Center. You have an office in the medical office building mm -hmm. and people can make appointments right there on the campus of Jersey City Medical Center. Absolutely. So tell me about who else, what other specialties do you have in your group? So we cover most of the gamut of when we talked about those eight subspecialties. Right. So we have a, a hand specialist, Dr. Right. Capo, my partner, and we have a sports medi medicine specialist that will uh, treat things minimally invasively with an arthroscope, let's say, uh, Dr. Guillaume Lomas Gonzalez. Okay. Um, and when you talk about arthroscopic, in other words, they don't have to cut open your knee anymore. They can just go in with a with a fine noodle, uh, needle, <laughs> noodle. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's a it's a mild incision about the width of your finger or less, really? and it allows you to place a camera inside the knee and use some smaller instruments for some problems that aren't quite as severe. Where not too long ago would require enormous incisions, enormous rehab times, blood loss, and overnight stays. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So when, when he specializes in sports medicine, so people with any kind of sports-related injuries, they can come to your office right at the medical center in the medical office building, and he can kind of help diagnose and treat those, those patients also. Exactly. Yeah, those weekend warriors always the weekend kind of, warriors. don't they? Yeah. <laughs> don't they, they always try to, uh, you know, they show up on Monday morning like, oh, I played some basketball and haven't played in six months, right? Exactly. <laughs> so that's good. Well, we are so happy to have you at the medical center. Uh, it's been great talking to you about orthopedic trauma. Um, this is Dr. Um, Frank Liberace, who is our chief of orthopedic trauma at Jersey City Medical Center and we'll be back next week.